Good evening. We are looking at the principle of operation of a clutch. The clutch principle is based on that of friction. When two friction surfaces are brought in contact with each other and are pressed, they are united due to friction between them. Now if one of them is called as driving member and the other is a driven member. Whenever the driving member will rotate, the driven member will rotate along with it due to the present friction between them. This friction between the two surfaces depends on the area of the surface, pressure applied upon them and the coefficient of friction of the surface materials. The driving member is kept rotating which in our case is the engine crankshaft and the driven member is brought in contact with the driving member. It also starts rotating. <coughs> engine crankshaft is having flywheel mounted on it and the driven member has got pressure plates mounted on the transmission shaft. When the friction surfaces of the clutch are in contact that also means that the clutch is engaged. The driving and the driven members will rotate together and the power is transmitted to the rear wheel. Whereas the engine is disconnected from the transmission system that is crankshaft containing flywheel is disconnected from the pressure plates, we obtain a drive which is disengaged, a clutch is disengaged, transmission system is not getting power directly from the engine, though the engine still might be rotating, the transmission system is not getting power from the engine. Next, we have to talk about constant mesh gearbox. As you know, this is the second type of gearbox, the first one being sliding mesh gearbox, in which the gears are sliding. We have to remember there are three shafts, clutch shaft, lay shaft, also called as counter shaft. And the third one is spliced main shaft. In this system, all the gears and all the shafts are always, always engaged. Though the gears are engaged all the time, the main shaft does not rotate. It can remain stationary because of the clearance between the gear and the main shaft. The gear and the lay shaft are fixed, so the lay shaft keeps on rotating all the time. We can see something like structure called as dog clutch. Now remember this dog clutch is responsible for engagement of gear in this case. Since these gear, second gear, low gear, reverse gear are rotating on their center, rotating about their center without making the shaft to rotate. they must be engaged with the help of these dogs which are indirectly controlled by the gear shift lever when the sliding dog clutch the first sliding dog clutch on the left which you can see over here will engage on the right you will obtain second gear because second gear drive will be given to this shaft moment the gear shift lever is slided for this left dog towards left it will engage with the clutch gear that is the top gear the third gear over here when this engages the main shaft gets maximum speed as you know, first gear is minimum speed, 
second gear is higher third gear is the top speed in this case it has three gears and one reverse gear let us look at some important points related to this it is a gearbox in which all the gears are in constant mesh with each other all the time hence we get a quiet operation compared to sliding mesh gearbox in case of sliding mesh gearbox since the gear was sliding we had spur gears here we have helical gears these gears on the main shaft are splined and are free to rotate whereas the gear on the counter and lay shaft are fixed two do dog clutches are provided i have shown you in the figure already principle of operation i have told that if you engage this right clutch by shifting the gear shift lever towards right you will engage reverse gear that uses idler gear over here whereas when you engage this right dog by pushing it towards left you will engage the low gear that is the first gear similarly left hand and the right hand dog clutches function one thing to notice is in this type of gearbox because all the gears are in always in mesh they are safe from being damaged and unpleasant grinding sound does not occur while engaging or disengaging them look at the differential over here in this differential these two half shafts are nothing but rear axles the drive from the front engine is coming from the propeller shaft to the bevel pinion this bevel pinion is rotating the crown wheel crown wheel is rotating this cage or casing in which you can see planet pinion and sun gear is mounted planet pinion is free to rotate on its axis without any drive sun gear is rotating because of the rotation of the crown wheel which rotates this casing or cage so differential is a mechanism employed by means of which outer wheels run faster than the inner wheels while taking a turn now you must understand that while the vehicle is taking the turn the outer radius of the outer wheel is more compared to the inner wheel so the outer wheel has to travel more distance in less time what is the purpose of differential it is to provide relative motion of rear wheels when car is taking a turn so the speeds are different the torque transmitted are exactly equal the differentials are used in rear drive axle of front engine rear wheel drive vehicles four wheel drives have differential at both front and rear wheels you can see the fluid flywheel or fluid coupling over here in this case you can clearly notice a driving shaft and a driven shaft driving shaft is nothing but a the engine crank shaft and the driven shaft is transmission system shaft this fluid flywheel or fluid coupling is replacing the flywheel in the case of manual transmission one thing very obvious the flywheel is used for automatic transmission systems it has one impeller pump impeller part other is turbine part part 
both the parts have got their respective blades. You know the function of a pump is to pump water or create water head through it with a, with a high force. Turbine part work is to rotate at the speed of the speed at which the water or the fluid drives the blade. Since engine is always rotating, the drive is coming from the engine on the crankshaft on which this pump part is mounted. When the pump throws the liquid centrifugally, pump throws the liquid centrifugally, the turbine the liquid goes and impinges on the turbine blades and it rotates the turbine part. So it has to take certain time to catch the velocity. Suppose if this part is rotating, pump part is rotating, driving, driving part is rotating, the driven part takes some time to start rotating and gaining the same speed. Or I should say, the torque transmitted from this part to this part is not immediate in the beginning. It takes time to transfer. So fluid coupling is a hydraulic unit that replaces a clutch or semi or fully automatic system and transmits the engine torque to transmission system. It is also called as fluid drive or fluid flywheel. You can see it has no mechanical connections or face to face contact as you can see in the manual transmission clutches, single plate or multi plate clutch. Let us talk about the construction. So we have seen two rotating parts already. First one is pump impeller that is a driving unit, turbine gunner, driven unit. Now both of them are enclosed in a single housing. Liquid being oil because oil has a lubricating power as well. Oil, this oil is itself is serves to the transmitting torque from pump to the turbine. Talking about the working, as soon as the prime mover starts rotating, the pump impeller also starts rotating, prime mover being the engine and throws the oil outward by centrifugal action. This, this oil then enters the turbine runner and exerts a force on runner blades. The magnitude of torque increases with increase in the speed of the driving shaft and eventually when the torque overcomes the inertia effects of the turbine, the turbine runner begins to rotate. The oil from the runner then flows back to the pump impeller and thus the complete hydraulic circuit is established. If you want to find out the efficiency for this formula given over here is power output by power input torque to omega. So since the torque supplied is equal all the torque is transmitted only efficiency term comes turbine angular velocity upon pump angular velocity that is runner angular velocity upon impeller angular velocity.